In this video, we're going to look at pericarditis. This is an overview and introduction. Pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium. Pericarditis can be either fibrous, dry, or effusive, with purulent, serous, or hemorrhagic exudate. The triad of signs for pericarditis include chest pain, pericardial friction rub, and serial ECG changes. Pericarditis accounts for up to 5% of presentations to the emergency department for chest pain. The pericardium is a membrane that surrounds the heart. Here is the heart muscle, the cardiomyocyte. The layers of the pericardium include the visceral, parietal, and outer fibrous layer. Between the visceral and parietal layer is the pericardial space, or cavity. In pericarditis, there is inflammation of the pericardium, which results in narrowing of the pericardial space, and possibly some scarring. If pericarditis persists and is not treated, pericarditis can lead to pericardial effusion, which is a complication. Pericardial effusion is when the pericardial space is filled with extra fluid. The extra fluid exerts pressure on the heart muscles, resulting in cardiac dysfunction. The signs and symptoms of pericarditis include fever, myalgia, chest pain, tripoding position, which relieves the pain, and signs of right-sided heart failure, including a raised JVP and peripheral edema. Risk factors, male gender, age between 20 to 50, systemic autoimmune disease, having a viral and bacterial infection, past and recent cardiac surgery, having had a transmural myocardial infarction, and having uremia or being on dialysis. Investigations for suspected pericarditis include ECG, which may show global ST elevation and PR segment depression, serum troponin, ESR, C-reactive protein, full blood count, and serum urea. An echocardiogram is important in ruling out differentials and checking for pericardial effusion and pericardial damage. Performing an x-ray may show a bottle of water shaped enlarged cardiac silhouette, which is a sign of pericardial effusion. The management of pericarditis is to perform pericardiosynthesis if there is presence of cardiac tamponade or symptomatic pericardial effusion. In pericarditis, inflammation occurs because arachidonic acid is formed through phospholipids um, on cell membranes. The arachidonic acid produces prostaglandins and thromboxin A2 with the enzyme COX. These molecules contribute to the fever, pain, and inflammation in pericarditis. Therefore, the management of pericarditis, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are useful because they inhibit COX and so stop the inflammatory process. However, a side effect of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is peptic ulcers and so proton pump inhibitors also need to be administered to prevent peptic ulcer formation. In recurrent pericarditis, patients can go on non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs proton pump inhibitors, plus Midas colchicine, which is common med for gout, and plus minus corticosteroids for serious cases. Complications of pericarditis include pericardial effusion, which we mentioned earlier. Pericardial effusion can become cardiac tamponade once the fluid builds up and becomes so bad that it impairs the heart's contractility. Another complication can be chronic constrictive pericarditis.